Making a video game is not an easy feat, and making one that is completely balanced for all players across their entire playtime is even harder. While teams of developers will do their best if half a century or so of video games has taught us anything, it's that where there's an opportunity to exploit something overpowered, we'll find it. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 skill upgrades that broke video games. Number 9. Boom Headshot – The Outer Worlds Obsidian's Ace Outer Worlds features a ton of awesome mechanics, however the chain effect that can come from learning how to exploit repeat precise headshots is the most destructive and useful. Boom Headshot causes enemies' heads to explode if they die from a headshot, with the added bonus of causing 25% worth of additional headshot damage to nearby opponents. Almost immediately this can have a serious effect if there are enough enemies around, causing a sizable chain reaction when one exploding head is enough to engulf the whole pack. On top of all this, applying to players, Boom Headshot is also available for companions, increasing the possibility of a runaway kill chain kicking off across every encounter. Number 8. Bullseye – The Elder Scrolls V – Skyrim the fan-favorite archery skill tree was really given a shot in the arm following the release of Elder Scrolls V, and is still one of the most easily leveled and overpowered skill trees in the game. Once a player reaches level 100, they have the option to purchase the Bullseye perk. This carries a 15% chance of casting a paralysis spell on any enemy, holding them still for a handful of seconds, and letting you just keep hitting them, likely extending the window. Even better, weaker enemies will die before the arrow hits them due to how Skyrim occasionally calculates in coming damage, meaning every opponent is either a cakewalk or someone you can freeze in place until they go down too. Number 7. Bloody Mess Fallout 4. Present in every Fallout since the first game, it was Fallout 4 that really highlighted this as one of the most overpowered skills going. The most memorable thing about this perk is the fact it makes an enemy completely explode, with blood and guts flying everywhere when they die. Whilst it's a great meme-worthy visual, the splattering of entrails is purely aesthetic. It's under the hood where some incredible damage increases can really fly off the rails. Bloody Mess is the only perk that universally increases damage regardless of weapons or build. It allows an additional 15% of extra permanent damage no matter the situation, with level 4 also starting to explode nearby enemies for instant kills if just one in a pack detonates first. Needless to say, this thing lives up to its name. Number 6. Chain Takedowns – Far Cry 3 Takedowns have been present in a multitude of ways throughout the Far Cry series, though it was the mighty Far Cry 3 that expanded their capabilities tenfold. As later editions would end up copying, Far Cry 3 features a variety of approaches to instant killing platoons of enemies, including pistol takedowns, deaths from above and below, knife throws and grenade kicks, all letting you kill enemies unaware of your presence. Chain takedowns then ramp things up even more, letting you rack up the body count by jumping from enemy to enemy in one giant connected animation. Providing enemies are close enough together after that first hit, you can just keep linking takedowns together for as long as necessary. Once you're comfortable with the game and know your way around the AI, that means the majority of outposts are being cleared by just pushing the analog stick towards your next opponent. Number 5. Middle Earth – Shadow of Mordor what an absolute time the original Shadow of Mordor was. Long before Warner Brothers would microtransaction the sequel into the ground, reveal they'd still patented the Nemesis system and leave the whole idea to fizzle away. That original game was an incredible showcase of third-person hack and slash action, with the Wraith ability Lethal Shadow Strike teleporting you between orcs to bring them down in one go. Lethal Shadow Strike requires two elf shots to use, with some players quickly cottoning on to specific combinations of additional abilities that let you exploit this feature to wipe out half the map. With Lethal Shadow Strike already pretty OP, purchasing Flame of Azkar and Knight of Eregion, you can then free up the resource requirement that would make you take breaks between use. Flame of Azkar allows for 15 seconds of unlimited elf shots, but Knight of Eregion grants plus one elf shot anyway on every Shadow Strike kill. Together you have a rinse-repeat process of chaining executions across multiple enemies, completely taking away any sort of challenge, but at least you can feel incredible in the process. Number 4. Elite Ram Assassin's Creed Black Flag Black Flag was a simpler time for Assassin's Creed. A life on the high seas, loot to plunder, and sea creatures to chase down. You also had plenty opportunity to upgrade one Edward Kenway and your sea shanty filled ship, the Jackdaw. Most upgrades are acquired by completing the storyline and various quests, but also by exploring the massive map, finding materials, and acquiring plans from sunken wreckages. It was up to you when you picked different things up. It was all down to how you decided to explore, and you might have stumbled upon something incredible early on. Undoubtedly, the most most overpowered upgrade you can attach to the Jackdaw is the Elite Ram, acquired in the La Concepcion shipwreck. 
The difference between the Elite RAM and the upgrades before is immediately noticeable. This thing just lets you barrel straight at any ship other than the biggest around and obliterate them in one hit. Even larger boats will still have a sizable chunk of their health knocked off. What makes this upgrade so game-breaking is how redundant it makes all the others feel. If you were lucky slash unlucky enough to track this down in the early few hours of the game, congratulations, you almost don't need to bother with ship combat. Number three, mark and execute with the 5-7. Splinter Cell Conviction. Putting it out there, I love the mark and execute feature, though I absolutely get the fact it can become OP as hell and arguably encourages a playstyle that's anti-stealth. I just, you know, with the right amount of tweaking, being able to capitalize on group killing a bunch of guys with auto headshots from an earned set of stealth kills is really cool. Anyway, clearly Ubisoft agreed they overreached with this idea in Splinter Cell Conviction, as auto-targeting four enemies was then removed from Blacklist. Here, your targeting options are per weapon, with the 5-7 silence pistol giving you the four. What pushes it into overkill territory is the fact you can refill all four targeting pips with just one single button takedown, creating a mentality of banking one to to remove four enemies that clears entire levels like they're nothing. Factor in the grab enemy animation and you're protected in a firefight if things go sideways, with the fact that executions can go through most solid objects even tagging opponents if they decide to take cover. Mark and execute hopefully makes a refined return in the next game, as I swear there's a way to make this an identifying part of Splinter Cell's New Age franchise identity. Number 2. Fart Damage South Park The Stick of Truth in South Park The Stick of Truth, part of the RPG experience sees your new kid learning a variety of magic attacks that are in fact a range of unique farts you can then inflict on opponents. There are four trouser trumpets in the game, Dragon Shout, the Sneaky Squeaker, Copper Spell, and Nagasaki, all of which can be used to clear out the world's map and gain a ridiculous advantage in combat. See, these attacks apply grossed out status and inflict huge amounts of damage, especially to opponents on fire. But where things go crazy is letting you fart on enemies before the fight even starts. This pre-bout gas attack inflicts the grossed out status automatically without taking any mana away, giving you the edge and often knocking opponents down to half their health before anything has even happened. Fart damage was single-handedly the thing that undid Stick of Truth's entire combat system, but that's also hilarious in a very South Park way. And number one, drones. Watch Dogs Legion. Yes, this game existed and actually came out. It wasn't just some shared fever dream we all had at the end of 2020. Surprisingly as well, it was pretty awesome. Featuring a truly ambitious character and AI generation system that makes all NPCs unique, recruitable, and playable. Yes, there were buckets of abilities overall, but Legion gave you the entire city of London to play as and largely pulled it off. In amongst this lot then are drone experts, who bring with them a specialist knowledge of how to pilot various hovering platforms dotted around the city. With cargo drones everywhere, and this expert able to summon a drone if not, you can fly straight to most collectibles or map markers, straight past sentries or escape the cops by just floating off into the sky. Getting your green goblin on also lets you bypass security checkpoints and entire levels worth of enemies, dropping in to retrieve items, kill high value targets or just giving you a mobile platform to take out guards from on high. And those are just 9 skill upgrades that totally broke their video games. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.